Shire. to love eternal greetings my brethren and sister I am brother Spence once again in the lion's den down here in the basement yes I on this particular seven day Sabbath I will say Shabbat Shalom Simba Salam and Sabbath peace to one and all in this particular video lecture, to carry out job works, to carry out the Lord's work, to do good on the Sabbath, we shall continue in the previous vid. I felt led by the Irit, I felt led by that Ruach HaKodesh, that true Holy Spirit, to finish up the last few chapters of the book of Genesis. And better sheep, as we say Hebraically, but Genesis in the beginning. Regarding the finale of the great story of Joseph, also known as the great prophet Joseph, and regarding his brothers, his own biological brothers, the other sons of the great prophet Jacob or Yaakov, the great prophet and patriarch Israel himself and his 12 sons the original founding fathers of the 12 tribes of Israel Joseph his beloved son from his beloved wife Rachel or Rachel and his other biological brother Benjamin or Benjamin and that seed of Jacob from that seed of Yaakov through Rachel. I would like to touch on that connection. In the previous vid, I mentioned the prophetical and mathematical layout for that mathematical pattern, that cosmic pattern that the Hebrew scriptures within this great book of life, within the foundation of Torah, within this Bible, of Jah word reveals to us the story of Joseph a Messiah type in his time in which the Most High Yahweh some say Yahweh Jehovah the Most High Jah the true living Allah Hayim, the one true and living Elohim of Israel and all creation the God of all nations, the true Elohim of heaven and earth. Brought salvation, you know, physical salvation to the seed of the great prophet Jacob, the seed of Israel, including Joseph himself. He used the great prophet Yosef in his time to save all of Mitzrayim. All of ancient Egypt in that time, as well as as well as that land of Canaan, that land of Canaan, and those regions of Africa and the Middle East, or what we know of today as Africa and the so-called Middle East. 
we see that prophetical foreshadowing of the Moshiach ben Yosef, Savior, the Messiah type, and that Savior being the son named Yosef, that Moshiach ben Yosef, foreshadowing the one true prophet of all prophets, the true Messiah, the true Mashiach in the first advent, that fulfillment of the Torah and the prophets. We have the uh, obvious divine connection, seven years of famine, the seven years of plenty, and first came the seven years of plenty, plenty of harvest, plenty of produce, and then we had seven years of famine. So that ingathering of the extra one-fifth of produce and the harvest in those seven years of prosperity, seven years of plenty, was able to save them through that drought, that great famine in that region throughout the ancient Mitzrayim, ancient Egypt, in that particular dynasty, of course, the earlier dynasty before the time of the great prophet Moshe. Or as most people know, the great prophet Moses, beginning in the book of Exodus. Hebraically, we say Shemot, or the book of Exodus, the second book of the Torah. We also broke down in the previous vid the divine connection with the anointed tribes of Yehuda, that ultimate anointed tribe of Judah, the lineage of kings, which would come, the Messiah, or Christ, the anointed, both in the first and second advent as the one true king of kings. But there was that connection of Judah, the tribes of Manasseh, or pronounced Hebraically Manasseh and Ephraim, the sons of Joseph, the biological sons of the great prophet Yosef, Manasseh and Ephraim. And that divine connection with Ephraim or Ephraim, the second son of Joseph, receiving that blessing from their grandfather, Jacob, or Israel, before he took his last breath. The last few chapters of, of Genesis going into, which will begin first of this next week. It's already the seven day Sabbath of this week. So here in the next couple hours, we have the sundown. We say Shavua Tov in the Hebrew, good week, give thanks and praise, prepare for the eve of the first day of a new week, a new cycle. We go into the first few chapters of the book of Exodus. We see that prophetical parallel connection with the tribes of Judah, Ephraim, Judah, Ephraim, and Benjamin. That is Judah, Ephraim, and Benjamin. Regarding Messiah, the fulfillment of the Torah and the prophets, and regarding Christos in both Advents. In the first Advent through Yahshua HaMashiach, through Yahushua the Messiah, and what many call Jesus Christ, what many of I and I say, Jesus Christos or Yeshua, no, Jesus Christos. And then we have the second Advent, many of I and I of the elect, Rastafari, fulfilled Nazarene and Beta Christians, fulfilled Israelites of heart as Nazarene and Nazarites. Both true Christians, dreadlock Rastas and full of bald head Rasta brethren and sistren of all nations. First to the ethnic Yahudim, the original Ethiopian Falasha Jews. First of the ethnic African Hebrew Israelites, according to lineage of that remnant. And then to 
many of I and I righteous Gentile, many of the righteous Gentiles of the other nations grafted in only through Jah's grace, only through God's grace in Jesus Christ. That Antichrist Jesus is those of us, even outside of Rastafari, other fellow Torah observant ones that are born again through Messiah, you know, through Christ, through Yah's grace, through Jah's grace in Yeshua, through Joshua, which is Jah's salvation, the basic foundation of Jah love and salvation through Jesus Christ. And we know, we see that prophetical parallel, Jesus Christ, I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah, in the first advent, the true Messiah, not Antichrist Jesus, Caesar Borgia, Romanized image, posing as what they call Jesus Christ. We're speaking of the true Christ, Jesus, or Christ Jesus, who is Jesus Christos, who is Yahshua, the Messiah, Yahushua, or Yahshua, and his original Hebrew name means Yahweh's salvation, or Jehovah is salvation through the Son. We see the Moshiach bin Yosef foreshadowing Christ, or Messiah, as our Lord and Savior in the first advent, the one who brought salvation, or spiritual salvation, to all of humanity. Both that lineage of ethnic and spiritual Israel to other nations, e even those of I and I, caught up in this spiritual Egypt today, this post modern day world system, this world seclorum within today's daughter Babylon, this whole wicked Babylon system, this corrupt world system that we're all commanded not to be conformed to. Once again, I'll say it again not to be conformed to. But be set apart. Yes, I. First, to the faithful Yahudim, both true ethnic and, and spiritual Yahudim of the of the Hebrews, the Habarim, according to lineage, then to the righteous Gentiles, according to flesh and blood of other nations, were all grafted into one kingdom, to Jah's kingdom, and that true core body of Messiah which is that true core body of Christ. Many are called, but few are chosen, as it says in this great book of life, in the scriptures, we call the Bible today, even the teachings of his majesty, Kanamawi Hali Selassie I. Hali Selassie I says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So his majesty, as a return Messiah, and the one true king of kings, and that new name, that precious name, we say that new name, or that precious name, in the Rolam Hark tongue. Sai, Rastafar, I, Ali, I, Selassie, I. So, Ali, Selassie, and Amharic is the power of the Trinity. That's the power of the Triunity. There are many Triunities or Trinities. We have the Trinity. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. We have the triune or the trinity of man in his likeness. Mind, body, and soul. That's right. We have the mind, body, and soul of the human spirit. As above, so below and from within. We have other mansions within the elect, Nazarene and Nazarites. The Babushanti Rastas that acknowledge other cosmic trinities that brought the uprising of the overall Rastafari movement. Begin in Ethiopia, begin in parts of Africa and the Middle East from its original source. We begin to rise up through that seed of Benjamin or Benjamin, as we know of today, in the West Indies, the Caribbean, parts of Jamaica, that rise of the Rastafari movement through, you know, righteous 
black supremacy, that calling first to the Yahudim, first to the ethnic Israelites, and that ethnic tribe of Benjamin that would rise up. That movement through the great prophets, Marcus Messiah Garvey, say uh, Prince Emmanuel, the black Christ, well, many are Christ types. Even you and I are called to be Christ types, the Messiah types, and that true eminent of faith, the Christ mind. Then you have his majesty, Ali Selassie, the King of Kings. So the infamous psalm amongst the Tehillim or the Psalms, many of the Rastafari of different mansions, not just the Babushanti, that, that participated in the rise of the good side of black supremacy, the fight against the evil of white supremacy. This is not meant to be a tribalistic thing. There had to be that baptism to burn out the colonialism, right? The colonialism of white supremacy through Salika, uh, Catholicism, Protestantism, all this dispensationalism that plagued the hearts and minds of the African slaves and descendants of African Israelites who were Benjamites. Their identity, Hebraically, from the tribe of Benjamin, some from the tribes of, of Levi, possibly, in the West Indies, throughout the islands, what we know today as the Caribbean islands, and in particular, that island of Jamaica, we see a righteous Benjamite prophet, Bahana Selassie, the light of the Trinity, Bob Marley, other great prophets and revolutionaries. Rastafari prophets such as Peter Tosh, Bunny Whaler, but many of the Psalms chanted by the Rasta man and that rise of Rastafari consciousness <clears throat> was Psalm 68. Aside. Let Jah arise and all his enemies be scattered. We hear the great prophet Peter Tosh chant this song and even sing the song through his music. We hear other great Rastafari uh, prophets, fellow musical prophets and messengers in songs by Steel Pulse, <clears throat> the great roots reggae band Steel Pulse, you know, from the UK and other parts of the world where the seed, the ethnic seed of Israel and of the elect Rastafari, who is majesty, beginning to take the lead. It says in Psalm 68, Verse 27, there is Benjamin, or Benjamin, the smallest, their ruler. It says Benjamin, the youngest, their ruler. The leaders of Yehuda, or the leaders of from the tribe of Judah, their company. So we see the majority, not all, because once again, the original jump off, the original origin of the Rastafari movement was from the original source in Ethiopia. In Africa, but that uh, rising revolution began its jump off in parts of the Caribbean, parts of the West Indies, and in Jamaica, the seat of Benjamin. It says Benjamin, Benjamin takes the lead to set the example. And you have many original, you know, Benjamites, you know, true ethnic African Israelites. You know, ethnic Israelites of that seed, with African Jamaicans, African uh, Benjamites that, to this day, hold that scepter. You know, they hold that torch high. Still set that example amongst the true Christian Rastafari. In these past few decades, there's been a lot of Rastaism and schisms and things of Babylon that have crept in. That same seed and the seed of all mankind the seed of all peoples on this earth this rastaism dealing with ism and schisms the ultimate blasphemy we focus more on dreadlocks smoking ganja don't get it twisted 
the smoking, the smoking of marijuana, the cannabis is a Rastafari tradition. Not every Rasta, not every so-called Rasta man has to has to smoke, but it is a major part of the liberty and spirituality of the true Rasta man, the true Christ man, that true fulfilled Israelite. As a matter of fact, we have evidence that the cannabis sativa is used in so-called spiritual or even so-called religious artifacts throughout the Bible, throughout scriptures in the Torah. We have the cannabis oil that was used in the incense that was used in the tabernacle, in the temple, in Old Covenant times. It's still a true Israelite possession today. Everyone, give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, and Rahaili Selassie the first. Give thanks for your presence with us, just giving you a reminder of the tiger's nest this evening. Right, family. so we got and this is what we will be speaking about. You see, you have the uh, the priests and or the true anointed Rasta brethren of, of different mansions sharing this truth, but. It's not the dreadlocks or the ganja smoke and the commercialism, the reggae music that defines a true Rasta man. That's not what defines a true Rastafarian brother or sister of any mansion, of any camp, or any school of thought. You know, it is the heart. It is a true heartical perception of this divine scripture through his majesty in Christ, accepting his imperial majesty, Karamawi Hali Selassie I, or Hali Selassie I, the King of Kings and his divinity as the King of Kings and return Messiah, the return Christ and his kingly character. Yes, I. You're focused on what's become popular. In the original rise of Rastafari and many of the Nazarites, dreadlock Rastas, all due respect to this day, that are genuine, versus the many wolves in sheep's clothing that take upon the accessories of what's become popular and over commercialized. The dreadlocks is a major necessity of many Rastas, but it's not a it is not a necessity to the point where it becomes a, a informed doctrine or a mandated doctrine. That one must have, you know, one must have dreadlocks or long hair to be a Rasta. That's silly, you know. So we have ones with long dreadlocks, may may be of a particular color, a more ethnic, you know, African Israelite background, but then they deny the Bible. They come with this Antichrist spirit, denying the Bible, still talking about Rasta this and that's Rastaism and schisms, and people of all race have dabble with this this unclean spirit that same antichrist spirit that produces the majority of hippo christians within modern day christianity out of the original ethiopian orthodox christian church or the true christian faith that fulfilled israelite faith according to what the bible says the majority of counterfeit christianity is of gentile christianity so as one of the righteous gentiles according to flesh and blood as myself, you know, as I self grafted in through Josh Grace, through faith, I must say, especially so-called fellow Europeans and fellow so-called white people, <clears throat> I guess people of other races, of the other Gentile nations as well, but be careful because not all, but many white people or so-called white people have polluted everything, polluted music, Rock and roll, hip hop, Christianity. You come into Rastafari. You like me, who is called into Rastafari through God's grace, only through Jehovah's grace in Jesus Christ, or through Yeshua. You must be humble. Don't get so puffed up with pride and that that leaven of white privilege in your heart. And this is not no Dixie Crat talk. This is not no pseudo-liberalism or any other ism and schisms, but there are a lot of people with white privilege. You can't take that into Rastafari. Come on, like, 
first the ethnic Yahudim, then the righteous Gentile, according to flesh and blood. For I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the gospel of Messiah, for it is the power of God, the power of Ha'alohim unto salvation to everyone who believeth, to the Jew first, to the ethnic Yehudi first, and also to the Greek and those of all nations who accept. So with that being said, it is for everyone who accepts it's the first Rastafari elders, ethnic African Rastafari elders, you know, and the Israelite elders said, Ethiopia is for all those who accept to be a part of that faith and that, that spiritual kingdom. So with that being said, we can't be like the modern day Pharisees and get too caught up in tribalism and racism and say, oh, well, you're not on this chart. So this salvation is not for you. Uh, that's not part of Jah's word. That's not part of Jah's word. On the flip side, a lot of my fellow white people, racially speaking, and I hate to speak like that because I speak in a oneness. I like to speak in a oneness according to faith and spirit that, that surpasses the boundaries of skin tone and so-called race or gender. <clears throat> However, we have to be humble and know our place. It is the roots that support I and I. We the righteous Gentiles, according to flesh and blood. who are grafted in, born again to be spiritual Israelites. You must take that righteous pride, not foolish pride, but don't be so prideful where you don't, you don't recognize scripture that there is a proper kingdom order of Jah's kingdom, first to the ethnic Yehudi, first to the Jew and Gentiles, to be of Israel and that true core body of Christ. Amen. But anyways, to build, you know, to rightfully build on what I've been talking about. Basically, what I've been talking about for the past uh, 27 minutes on this video lecture, we have some scriptures in order to build on what was spoken of in the previous vid uh, this past week. So if you don't mind, grab your Bibles, grab your Tanakhs, your scriptures, Let's go to the prophet Ezekiel. Turn to the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, beginning in verse 15. Once again, Ezekiel, chapter 37, beginning in verse 15 to verse 28. This is the daily buzz for that deeper meditation. Yes, yeah, the meditation. Let's take a break. So, let us proceed, shall we? Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 15. In the word of Hashem, for the word of the name, Yahuwah, Jehovah, came to me, saying, And you, son of man, take a stick for yourself and write on it. For Yehuda, or the tribe of Judah, for the children of Israel, his companions, take another stick and write on it for Yosef, symbolizing the great prophet Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then bring them together for yourself into one stick, and they shall become one in your hand. Let's read that again. Verse 17, then bring them together for yourself into one stick, one branch, and they shall become one, ahad, a oneness, in your hand to one Elohim, ahadu amlak, one jah, one aim, 
Verse 18. And when the children of your people speak to you, saying, Won't you show us what you mean by these? Verse 19. Say to them, Thus said the Master Hashem, Thus said the Most High Jah, See, I am taking the stick of Yosef, which is in the hand of Ephraim, the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, that means the other tribes of, of Yasharal, his companions, both ethnic and spiritual Israel through Messiah, the body of Christ, of all nations who are of the elect. And I shall give them unto him with the stick of Yehuda, the ultimate branch, or the stick of Judah, and make them one. Ahadu Amlak, we say Ethiopically, or you know, Yahweh Ahad, we say Hebraically, you know, Jah is one. That oneness. Make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand, the Father's hand. Through Jah's grace. Verse 20. And the sticks on which you write shall be in your hand before their eyes. And I speak to them. Thus said the Master Hashem. See, I am taking the children of Israel from amongst the nations wherever they have gone. And shall gather them from all around. And I shall bring them into their land. And I shall make them one nation in the land. One nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. And one sovereign, one king, shall be sovereign over them, and let them no longer be two nations, and let them no longer be divided into two reigns. Interesting. One sovereign, or one king, the king of kings, shall be king over them, and all. And let them no longer be two nations, let them no longer be two divided, Reigns, verse 23, and they shall no longer defile themselves with their idols, nor with their disgusting matters, nor with any of their transgressions. And I shall save them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned. I shall cleanse them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim. Thus saith the Most High, thus saith the Lord, I shall be their God. I shall be their Elohim. They shall be my people. One kingdom. One nation. No more division between the ethnic tribes. The different tribes of Israel. Even amongst ethnic Israelites. The biological seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No division between Judah. That land of Yehuda and Israel. No division between Judah and Ephraim, or better pronounced, Ephraim. Now, this is deep because Ephraim, you have ethnic Ephraim or Ephraim, and then you have that prophetical, deeper spiritual definition, that deeper spiritual revelation of Ephraim, the son of Joseph became a tribe, the tribes of Ephraim, tribes of Manasseh, the two sons of, of, of the great prophet Yosef. Then you have Judah, the anointed tribe of Judah, we read about in this week's Torah portion, the last few chapters of Genesis. The scepter shall not depart from Yehuda, or the scepter shall not depart from Judah. We see clear evidence today through his majesty, through that lineage from ancient Jerusalem, ancient and modern day Jerusalem to Ethiopia, that Judeo-Christian you know, Ethiopian land it goes back to that ancient land of Cush, the heartland of Africa, the origin of ancient Kemet that goes down the Nile River and back up to the highlands of Kush, known today as Ethiopia. We know today the monarchy of King David, the mighty David, and that lineage through Shalomo, through the great King Solomon, the infamous great King Solomon, the wisest man, you know, one of the wisest men to ever walk the earth, 
the son of David, that Davidic king resurrected through the Moshiach ben Dawit or Moshiach ben David, that Messiah David type. We have the Yosef type through Christ, Yeshua, through Jesus Christ in the first advent as our Lord and Savior. And then we have the Moshiach ben Dawit, a Davidic type. We see that little David, Judeo-Christian Ethiopia, slaughtered the giant Goliath, slew Goliath, that Roman Italian brigade, that Roman Empire, the unholy Roman Empire of so-called Catholic Christians and different types of Protestant Christians attacking Judeo-Christian Ethiopia, the only true original form of Orthodox Christianity in its purest form. Some describe the purest roots from both Judaism and Christianity, but we're not dealing with Judaism. You deal with the Tawahedo faith. The original Ethiopian Orthodox Christian faith, which is parallel to that fulfilled Israelite faith in the times of Christ, in the times of Messiah in that first advent. We see many of the, the fastings and the feasts in the solar cycle go parallel with the lunar cycles of the Mohadim. As we say Hebraically of Jah's feasts, we also read about there's other commandments that we must know and keep, as it is written in Leviticus 23. But with all that being said, no tribalism between the different tribes of even ethnic Israelites, according to flesh and blood. And then Ephraim, or Ephraim, symbolizes that opening through Moshiach ben Yosef, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, in the first advent is Christ. Or Christos, the anointed. First to the ethnic Jew. Or ethnic Hebrew Israelite of any tribe. Then to the righteous Gentiles. Now Ephraim or Ephraim. Also. Uh, according to lineage. Has a connection. A, a heavy prophetical connection with. Those of Puerto Rican. Postmodern Puerto Rican descent. There's an integration you know, there's kind of a melting pot there in the other islands. Just like in the West Indies, you have other islands in that area, in that portion of the earth, like Puerto Rico and Cuba, the seat of uh, Joseph. Other African Hebrew Israelites and more ethnic Israelites that were taken through slavery, integrated with uh, the Taino Indians, many indigenous peoples as well. So they have been identified a lot of so-called Puerto Ricans have been identified as Ephraimites, according to lineage, as ethnic Israelites of the lost tribes. So that's very interesting and very relevant. We must keep in mind that these scriptures, these prophecies are multidimensional. I'll say it again. These prophecies within the Bible are multidimensional, multiprophetical. So... We're not just speaking of one layer when we speak of the mystical revelation of the tribe of Ephraim. No, but through Yosef being that foreshadowing of the Moshiach ben Yosef, who is Jesus Christ, whose name is Yahshua, not Antichrist Jesus. Once again, we're not dealing with no uh, Romanized, false Jesus, the other Jesus that speaks of in uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and 4, what we see in most forms of Christianity outside of the Ethiopian, or Salika, outside of the original Ethiopian Orthodox Christian faith. And even amongst a lot of Orthodox, even Ethiopian Orthodox, there's a lot of leaven that has crept in, spiritual leaven from that other Antichrist Jesus spirit. So we're coming down to the nitty gritty in these last of last days. All types of ism and schisms out there. But we are in a sifting process, all of us, both ethnic Jew, ethnic Jews and Gentiles, black, white, brown, yellow, male and female, old and young. We're in the sifting process in these days of salvation and in these last days of judgment. So 
It's very interesting. It's very mystical. But it's also very serious. This type of prophecy and this, this level of study is for a serious student of God's word. To the basic foundation of Jah's word. This is not for itchy ears. It's not for itchy ears or uh, distractions or those who just want to stay lukewarm and complain about the signs of the times and, oh, times are so hard right now. They're so dark. You know, people are dying from tornadoes. You got like over, what, 100 tornadoes sweeping through the Midwest this past week. Taking lives, people's homes. Terrible thing. Out of love and good faith, we... We pray for them at least once. We pray for the, the loved ones who, you know, the families and friends who have lost their loved ones. A terrible thing. But, you know, at the same time, we're in the days of judgment. So it's a serious. Um, once again, it says, And they shall be my people, thus saith the Most High Jah, and I shall be their Elohim. I shall be their God. Verse 24, While David, or while David, my servant is king over them. This is key. While Dawit or Dawid in this translation, while David symbolizing the man, the great man and the great king, David, also foreshadowing the Moshiach ben David, just like the mortal man Joseph, the great prophet in his time, son of Jacob, foreshadowed Moshiach ben Yosef. Messiah or Christ in the first advent. We have the second advent through his majesty. Little David. You say a short man, very majestic, very humble, as a lion. Thus is titled the Lion of Judah, but also humble as a lamb. Stood five foot five. Now, little David, the way he positioned himself. Throughout history, in this past century, and brought salvation, preservation to his people and to all people, to all of Africa, not just Ethiopia, all of Africa, and to all nations, both ethnic Jews and Gentiles, according to lineage. If the Axis powers of Adolf Hitler and Mussolini of Italy in that time, of ancient Rome and the Vatican would have taken over Ethiopia back in World War II, this past century, it would have been over only because of his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie. That's right, Haile Selassie I positioned himself. And he gave that great speech. Then came and sat together at the Berlin Conference. And they were carving up Africa. I tell you all the time that how we are living today, where we are now in this world, this was not the plan. This was not the plan. And it was good that they, it did not go according to their plan that they would have killed their own self. I show you all the time. Eh? Hitler had concentration camps where they were killing black people and making boots. History again, eh? So you can just imagine what would have happened if these people here would have gotten through, if Mussolini did really conquer Ethiopia, him and Hitler, just imagine what would be taking place. Because you've got to keep in mind that Ethiopia was the last free country in the world, in the world, the last free country mm -hmm. in Africa. That's it. If they didn't get Ethiopia, that would be it. If they so, once again, that's a video put out in the past recent couple of weeks by Priest Isaac. Um, once again, verse 24. While David, my servant, is sovereign or king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd and walk in my right rulings and guard my laws and shall do them. Keep the commandments. Love and keep Jah's commandments and do them. Verse 25. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Yaakov, to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt. And they shall dwell in it, they and their children, 
and their children's children forever. And my servant David, or my servant David, shall be their prince forever. My servant David shall be their prince, the Ras, the head, Ras, or Rosh, the prince forever. Rastafari, that new name. And I shall make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant. Yes, I, an everlasting covenant. It is with them. And I shall place them and increase them, and shall place my set apart place in their midst forever. Verse 27. And my dwelling place shall be over them, and I shall be their Elohim, be their God, the Alahayim, their the sustainer, the Xiabiher, I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people, Jah's people. Verse 28. And the nation shall know that I, Hashem, or I, the name, Yahuwah, Jehovah, am setting Israel apart when my set apart place is in their midst forever. So it's through the ethnic tribe of Judah or Yehuda, which Christ comes, the first and second advent be the head, the prince, to be respected. And that second advent is Messiah, that Davidic king, in his return. You see. Now let's go to the gospel according to St. Lucas, or St. Luke. Turn your gospels and your Bibles to St. Luke, chapter 24, verse 30. Or beginning in verse 30. And it came to be when he sat at the table with them, speaking of Jesus Christos, speaking of Jesus Christ, whose name is Yeshua, the Messiah. But speaking of Mashiach in the first advent, it came to be when he sat at the table with them, having taken the bread, he blessed and had broken, he was giving it to them, and their eyes were opened. And they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. So this is after the resurrection, correct? After the resurrection of Messiah in the first advent, after the crucifixion or impalement upon the cross, the impalement upon the stake as the ultimate sacrificial lamb that finalized Passover lamb after the resurrection. We see Yeshua, or Justice Christ, comes to his own disciples, two of his own Tamudim, or his top ones. Went back to their house, met up with a couple other disciples. Went back to their humble abode, met with a couple other disciples, blessed, broke the bread he was giving to them, and their eyes were open, and they recognized him. Then he disappeared. So, you see... That story of Joseph, the last few chapters of this week's Torah portion, the last uh, few chapters of Genesis, that even his own biological brothers in the book of Genesis did not recognize the prophet Joseph. They did not recognize their own biological brother whom they betrayed and neglected and rejected. Those disciples did not recognize the Moshiach ben Yosef or Yeshua, even after the resurrection. And there could have been multiple reasons for that. Uh, he may have had his garment or his prayer shawl over his head. He may have transfigured during the resurrection, as two of the disciples saw that spiritual transfiguration of Yeshua on the mount. With the image of the great prophet Moses and Elijah, the great prophets Moshe and Eliyahu in that time, symbolizing another trinity, yes, symbolizing the triunity, because the Most High Jah, the Most High Living Elohim, works in divine numbers of three. He, Jah works in divine numbers of seven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen generations. Divided by two, as two messiahs of two advents, as one Mashiach, one Elohim, the oneness. So we are all one, regardless of the so-called boundaries of race or lineage. 
Ja kingdom, or Hashem's kingdom is a hardical kingdom, the Messiah. So, but once again, we see that, that spiritual and that prophetical foreshadowing of Joseph not being recognized by his own brothers. And of course, in Joseph's time, the great prophet Joseph, with all the Egyptian attire he had on as the prince, the Ras of, of Egypt, the right-hand man of a, I don't want to say a righteous pharaoh, but yeah, potentially righteous pharaoh in that dynasty of ancient Mitzrayim in that time. Going back to ancient Kemet, the original Kemet was more of a Yahuwah, Jehovah-based faith, more of a true Allah Hayyam-based faith in that time. So things had crept in. And so once again, going back to that mystical revelation, we see Moshia, we see the return Messiah or Christ and his kingly character, that Moshia, that return savior, the Moshia bin David or Dawit. And most people do not recognize and still to this day at the end of 2021, Gregorically speaking, almost 2022, do not recognize his majesty as the one true king of kings. Even though he received that title, king of kings, do not recognize him as the return Messiah or Christ and his kingly character and that Davidic kingship. Worthy to be receiving power and might and wealth as that great king. Hmm. Where does it say that? Revelation chapter 5 verse 11. And I looked and I heard the voice of many messengers or many angels around the throne, around your throne, and the living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was myriads or thousands of thousands and thousands of thousands. Verse 12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb having been slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and respect and esteem and blessing. Many other translations will say even wealth or spiritual and financial wealth. And the first advent as Messiah, Yeshua or Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is that suffering servant. Both King of Kings and Lord of Lords in both advents, prophetically as Messiah and as the Bain Elohim, you know, the son of Elohim, but he is the firstborn as our elder brother. Technically, should I say, technically, we are all called to be righteous, born again sons of the Most High Jah, as righteous, born again sons and daughters of Jah's kingdom, the Messiah. So once again, you know, most people to this day choose not to recognize him. Oh, yeah, that's very interesting. I've heard about the whole Rasta faith or Rastafari faith. Uh, it's very interesting. You know, it could be him, but I'm not quite sure about that. And I think that Haile Selassie was probably just a very Christ-like man as a as an Ethiopian emperor, and as, a, as, a, as a true Christian king, you know, as an Orthodox Christian king. I think he was very Christ-like. I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure if I want to subscribe to that. I just want to Put that aside, and he's neglected once again. We know the story of King David. King David, the man, the great prophet, the great king in his time. But back to the story in St. Luke or Lucas, the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, once again in uh, verse 31, and their eyes were open, and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. You see, his majesty had disappeared since 1974, 1975 in Ethiopia. They had these fake ceremonies. They had five different, should I say, five different funerals regarding the so-called death of Haile Selassie. When really he disappeared. You know, the sight that supreme angel in Old Covenant times, the supreme angel named Yahweh, or Jehovah, that ultimate supreme angel named Yahuwah, that Shekinah presence in the tabernacle before the great prophet Moshe. Even the great prophet Moses in his time 
could only see Elohim face to face through that angel, which made the appearance of a great fire by night, that angelic fire by night, and a pillar of cloud by day. See, you can see my face. Now you cannot see my face. You know, it's that mystical connection, you know, of the angel of the Lord and regarding Messiah or regarding Christ, both in the first and second advent. But once again, going back to the first advent of Yeshua or the first advent of Messiah is Yeshua. He disappeared from their sight, verse 32, and they said to each other, was not our heart burning within us as he was speaking to us on the way and he was opening the scriptures to us. Verse 33. And rising up that same hour, they returned to Jerusalem or they returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together. Verse 34. Saying, the master was truly raised and has appeared to Shimon, say the, the Messiah, our rabbi, our master, was truly raised from the dead and has appeared to Shimon. Verse 35, And they related what took place on the way and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. The Hebrew custom. Verse 36, And as they were saying this, Yeshua himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. Shalom Aleichem. Verse 37, and being startled and frightened, they thought they had seen a spirit, that they saw a duppy, the ghost of a, of a dead man. But, verse 38, he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Verse 39, See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Your Yeshua or Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christos showing his own disciples after the resurrection. His same physical body of flesh and blood that was revived. And brought back to life by the Most High Jah the Father. Of course there is that oneness of the Father and the Son. Don't get it twisted. You know but uh, there is that separation as well. There was the Father. Elohim, the Most High Jah, the Father, raised Yeshua, raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It says, see my hands where I have been crucified. See the nail mark in my hands. And so once again, in saying this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Verse 41. And while they were still not believing for joy, it says while they were still not believing for joy and marveling, he said to them, have you any food here? Verse 42. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. You know, fish, it's a kosher meat, according to Torah. You know, I'm not uh, trying to point out anything against any vegan diets or vegetarian diets. There's a strong, must I say, it is a strong liberty amongst fellow Rastafari of different mansions, different walks of life, with dreadlock Rastas, full of ball head Rastas. You know, I kind of have my hair growing out, but I'm not taking upon a Nazarite vow. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I have a glass of wine. You know, a Hebrew custom, one of Yeshua's first miracles was the transformation of water into wine, but in moderation is the true Hebrew custom. Much love and respect to those who take upon the Nazarite vow or take upon a vow you know, where they cannot drink from the grapevine, even grape juice, all due respect. That is a special set of pardoners. The true faith and liberty and discipline, the growing of locks upon one's head, you know, down to the floor receive more prophetical powers or prophetical powers and insight much love and respect but once again that does not define a true rasta man a true rastafarian brethren or sister according to liberty 
or according to fate, recognizing and accepting the divinity of his majesty, Rastafari himself, Nagu Stafari, a.k.a. Ali Selassie I, accepting the true divinity of Ali Selassie as king of kings, the return of Messiah in that second advent. So, Yeshua apparently did eat some kosher meat. That was the idol diet back then. It was kosher meat according to Torah. I said, hmm, my brother Frank, my good old Frank Delito, came over here earlier today to fellowship on Shabbat. So we had a, a glass of wine and had a, a cup of joe for the morning. But yeah, I try to keep everything as organic as possible. Burning the ancients, smoking the, the good herb. Smoking the good herb. And must I say, I, I did overcome a slight cold. I probably shouldn't say it was a slight minor cold, but it was a nasty, a nasty sinus cold. That lasted a couple days, but you know I didn't run into uh, you know I and I don't run to medicines and chemicals for some instant solution. So it's time to pray, or time to meditate and pray for healing. I smoke lots of herb. I drink lots of vitamin C, lots of orange juice, mango juice, and first and foremost through prayer, through repentance, through you know prayers of healing in the name of Yeshua. I've been healed by God's grace. Thanks and praise. So, once again, Yeshua in this time, he's telling his own disciples, see, I'm a real man. Of course, Yeshua, of course, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one true prophet of all prophets, as our Lord and Savior, of course, he was a man in the flesh. And in his divinity, much, much more. We see the same about his imperial majesty, Ali Selassie. It says, in saying this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still not believing the joy and marveling, he said to them, have you any food here? I'm hungry. I'm, I'm real. I'm a man in the flesh. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, verse 43. And taking it, he ate in their presence. And he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all have to be filled that were written in the Torah of Moshe. All that have to be filled that were written in the law of Moses and the prophets, and the Tehillim, the writings concerning me. So once again, Yeshua or Jesus Christ himself is saying to his disciples, as they're documenting, writing this down, directed through the Ruach HaKodesh, directed through that true Holy Spirit. These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all have to be filled that were written in the Torah of Moshe and the prophets and the Tehillim concerning me, as Messiah. Verse 45, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it has been written so that it was necessary it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise again from the dead the third day. Verse 47. And that repentance, that's true tashuva, and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in the name, in the Shem, to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, beginning at Jerusalem, that city of peace. And you are witnesses of these matters. Verse 49. And see... I am sending the promise of my father upon you, but you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on, from on high. Until you are clothed with power from on high, that baptism or that mikvah of the true Holy Spirit, that, that mikvah of the Ruach HaKodesh, that immersion of the Memphis Kedus, that true set-apart spirit. <clears throat> and he led them out as far as Beth Anya, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And it came to be, while he was blessing them, that he was parted from them and was taken up into the heavens, to the celestial heaven. And they, having bowed down to him, returned 
to Jerusalem. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the set apart place, praising and blessing Ha Elohim, praising the Most High Jah. Amen. So let's go back to verse 45. It says, Then he, then Yeshua, then Justice Christ opened their minds to understand the scripture, to overstand the scripture. This is one testament. It fulfilled Israelite faith and fulfillment of the Torah and the prophets, the great and faithful Hebrew Israelite prophets beforehand to this present time is in fulfillment through Yahshua, the Messiah, through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and that first advent. Reconfirmed through his majesty, the Messiah, and that second advent as the one true king of kings. Then we study, we meditate on the teachings of his majesty. One of his many teachings says, for my part, I glory in the Bible, glory in the scriptures, in this great book of life. Let's see. The eye, Selassie eye. The eye, Selassie eye. Yeah! Rastafari eye. So we have this other Bible, other translations of the Holy Bible. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Then the dragon, the ancient serpent, Satan, or the, the powers that be. We have multidimensional, multiprophetical, the powers that be. And even the great dragon himself was angry with the woman, the bride of Messiah, with ethnic and spiritual Israel, the, the true core body of Christ, and went off to make war on the rest of her children. So it's once again, verse 17, Revelation chapter 12. Then the dragon was angry with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her children, but those who keep the commandments of Elohim, those who keep Jah's commandments and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Once again, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God, the commandments of Ixiavi here, and hold fast to the faith of Jesus Christ. Yes, I. Shalom.